Jim Chi, Jolie Porn, and now Bernadette Manuelito. Jolie Porn and Jim Chi are such beloved characters. Now we have Bernie. Well, Bernie uh, started out as a minor character that my dad had used. I think he used her in five or six novels. Through the course of the series, she, she started out sort of badly, really, as a rookie cop. She has a big crush on Jim Chi. She gets her car stuck in the mud. It doesn't look, doesn't look like she's going to be around long, but she survives that. And in each book, she's getting a little stronger. She's becoming more of a professional policewoman. And then in uh, the second to the last book in Dad's series, Skeleton Man, uh, Bernie goes with Jim Chi and his Hopi friend, Cowboy Dashi, down to the Grand Canyon, and they're looking for uh, a woman who's been kidnapped. They're looking for stolen diamonds. And the guys say to Bernie, oh, you stay here, honey, and we'll take care of this. But Bernie doesn't stay there. And in fact, she finds this woman who's, who's in jeopardy. She finds the bad guys. Basically, she's wrapped up the whole story. And when I read that, I thought, this character has a lot of potential. And I thought, even if nobody except me and my mother read this book, it's time for Bernie to be a strong woman, a, a professional policewoman, and a crime solver. How do you describe who she is? Well, Bernie is very, very methodical. She, she, uh, her, if she had not become a policewoman, she probably would have been a botanist. And maybe she would have worked on restoring traditional agriculture on the reservation, because she really has a strong affinity for the natural world. Mm -hmm. And also, because of, of that scientific bent, she likes, take, likes to take things from point A to point Z without missing any, any of the things in between. And that kind of scientific thinking also really comes in handy if you're trying to solve a crime. So she also is a very devoted daughter. And then she has a little sister who is facing a bunch of challenges. So I think like a lot of modern women, she's balancing uh, professional life with her personal life. And then she has the challenge of being a woman in what is still basically a man's world. Mm. And you know, trying to um, be professional, but at the same time still be feminine and call on some of the qualities that I think women tend to maybe be a little more intuitive, mm -hmm. maybe a a little more patient with people who are having struggles than, say, a, a lot of men in law enforcement. And I don't mean to stereotype, but when you're asking me what it is that, that uh, what's the engine that makes Bernie go, I would say that was part of it. How do you make these plot decisions and, and these twists and turns? What is the decision making behind you as the writer? I have an idea of the setting. Say the book I'm working on now, there's a, a body in a car and a, there's a young uh, Navajo guy who's out hunting rabbits and he sees this car parked. He thinks, well, this is odd. And then when he comes back a few hours later, the car's in the same place. And that point, at that point he looks in and he sees a, a guy in there. So now I'm thinking, so how did this guy die? You know, and there's, you know, if, is it, was it suicide? Was it poison? Was it carbon monoxide? So at that point, I, there's like the road splits in three ways. And I think, okay, it's going to look like suicide, but it's really not suicide. So then, so then I get to deal with all that stuff. I mean, that's kind of the, I guess the root of that question is where does creativity come from? Mm. And I think, don't, I don't know, but I just, whenever, whenever I get a good idea, I just say thank you to the universe. <laughs> and I think sometimes something may look like a good idea, and then it kind of ends up in a cul-de-sac. Hmm. And so I hope that as I was heading there, there was maybe a, a road off to the left or right that I could have taken, so then I back up and take that road and see where it leads. It's a very, my process is a very kind of circular and messy process. You know, you've been writing your whole life, um, and now you're taking on these characters. Uh, what do you love about them, and how do you see, how have they evolved for you? Well, I love Jim Chi. I love his sort of open-hearted embrace of the world, and the fact that he forgives himself for making mistakes, and he just kind of keeps on keeping on. <laughs> and I love Bernie because she has, I mean, so much persistence and so much curiosity. And the third character, who, or, who was actually the first character my dad came up with, is Joe Leaphorn. And Joe is kind of a curmudgeonly old guy. <laughs> and he's, 
critical of people and he's, I would say, not a very good teacher. He, instead of saying to somebody, well, you did three things right and one thing wrong, he'll say, you really did this thing wrong. So, and, and uh, in some ways he was like my dad, not in that curmudgeonly way, but in the way that he would kind of go step by step by step to solving a problem. The book that I just finished, The Tale Teller, in that book, Joe Leaphorn is back as a crime solver. So this was the first time I actually worked with him as a character. And I found that underneath that sort of turtle shell exterior, there really was a very kind of compassionate, interested, uh, uh, devoted policeman who really wants, wants the best for the, for the Navajo people. And it was a fascinating process to work with that character and see that other side of him. So how do you bring characters to life? A lot of it is the details. So going back to that scene that I mentioned with the guy, with the, mm -hmm. the, the dead guy in the car. So as I'm writing that, I'm thinking, well, what, what time of year is it? What, you know, what does the air smell like? And who is this boy who finds this, this dead guy? You know, what's, what's he wearing? How, what's the temperature of the air? And as all of those kind of sensory details come through, the scene, the scene comes to life. I write about real places, mm -hmm. and I try to go there and just kind of spend some time there and just see what ideas come to me or see what I, what I hear. You know, are there birds? Are there bugs? Is there wind in the grass? Is there highway noise? Maybe there's a, a train track far away. Can you talk a little bit about Tony Hillerman, your father? Well, one thing that I have to give Dad credit for was that he never said to me, okay, I may die someday, and so I want you to take on writing this series. I think if he had said that, I would still be working on Spider-Woman's Daughter, mm -hmm. and every word I wrote, I would have felt his hot breath on my shoulder, <laughs> like, oh, is this right, is this not right? So no, we never talked about that, but I think what I learned from him was that when it's going well, writing can be pure joy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, really loved, he loved, he started out in journalism and he had so much passion for that. And then when he switched to fiction, I think he loved that even more. What is most important to you about writing? I would say uh, a sense that the, that the time they've spent with my book has been time well spent. That they've learned something about the, about the, about the Navajo Nation, that they've learned something about law enforcement, that they've learned something about New Mexico and the, the place that I write about, and maybe that they've learned through the struggles that the characters have come up with, that maybe it's given them a little insight into something that relates to their own lives.